this satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters and we also conduct the program from here and today we are going to start with the test of siddharth so i would like to know from siddharth if he is ready for the test hello pranam Pr- ji hello everyone uh, yes i have prepared for the test could you do my so you will get uh, 10 questions and if you answer 50% or more then you will be sent to the step number 4 of the program and meanwhile everybody should simply listen to the questions and answers then we'll discuss them then we'll take your questions so these are your questions um read carefully answer carefully no hurry okay i'll begin now the question is uh, so first question why is knowledge necessary so knowledge is not uh, necessary uh, but uh, there are some uh, there are some people who spend their lives completely happy without having any knowledge about their true purpose but if there is an unnecessary suffering in life uh, which can be due to absence of the true nature of the self that in order to get rid of that suffering over there knowledge is necessary but uh, uh, if uh, it is not a compulsion uh, because ultimately there is no knowledge there is only dropping of ignorance so that will be the answer to my first question what is the biggest cause of ignorance so there can be uh, many causes uh, there there may be sim- uh, there may be simply absence of tendencies intellectual tendencies which are necessary to gain the knowledge uh, maybe due to society due to indoctrination due to circumstance circumstances and uh the biggest reason according to me is absence of a guru or a guiding intelligence that is uh, that is the biggest cause of ignorance <clears throat> but yeah even in even if the gurus are available in locality uh, absence of tendencies will be the next uh, big or important reason for the ignorance you can say so that is the answer. that will be my answer to my second question next one which truth is more important relative or absolute uh it depends on where the truth is necessary for classification of experience so uh yeah if we are dealing on the level of illusion then absolute truth or oh, sorry relative truth comes into play because we are not <coughs> uh, dealing with the absolute uh, true, uh, reality over here in our day to day life there will be relative truth which will play more importance but in order to gain knowledge in order to know our true nature absolute truth will be important and also relative truth can be derived from the absolute truth so uh, it will de- depend upon which aspect of existence you are dealing with but any truth can be derived from the absolute truth that will be the answer to my third question next one experience is experiencer is not an object but nothing is an object true or false uh so i'll ponder on the definition of object over here object uh, is an object is nothing but a collection of patterns accumulation of patterns the uh, in in and it can be in in, in a very gross form like a table or a chair or it can be in a in a form that is not so much gross it is more subtle but 
uh, experiencer is not an object and uh, we don't define experience whether is it is an object or not uh, the, the definitions that are used to define the experience experiencer are always negative in nature there is negation over there so we cannot point towards okay this is experience and this is not uh, this is experience and this is not uh, not an experience uh, this is so there is no objectification when it comes to experience uh, that will be the answer to my fourth question if you are the experiencer uh, are the other people's life puppets a uh, lifeless puppets uh no that wouldn't be the case if i am the experiencer all the experiences are happening to me or i am the witness of all of them and other people they just live out their lives whether or uh, whether it is been permeated through knowledge or not the life will continue as on uh, the creature will do what is necessary for its survival for its uh, continued existence and eventually uh, across time if time makes any sense over here the creature will simply uh, dissolve uh, he, he, he is already dissolved if you look from a certain perspective because experiencer if if uh, the person is established in the awareness then uh, he is already dissolved he there was no beginning so there will be no end so i don't think it would be an appropriate to judge whether or other uh, whether other people's lives uh, people are lifeless puppets or not so that will be the answer to my this fifth question next one which experience is unchanging and why uh, no there is no experience which is which is unchanging all experiences change that is the defi uh, that is the definition definition of the experience that which changes so that which is unchanging is that aspect of the existence which is to which the experience happens and that is the experience uh to to the experience or all the experiences are illusory are changing but <clears throat> he himself is unchanged so so which experience is unchanging no there is not there is not any experience which changes all are unchanging oh sorry there is no experience that is unchanging all experiences are changing <clears throat> why is illusion not random if it has laws it should be called reality not illusion uh illusion is not uh, random because <clears throat> if we look from a uh, from the knowledge of illusion tells us that illusion is a fundamental change is binary and binary change is algorithmic is cyclic in nature it has certain properties so uh, and that properties are apparent to us in uh, in the form of laws physical laws natural laws and so we can say that the illusion is not random although there is certain certain things are random but uh, uh, it it may seem random to us but uh, one who has an extensive knowledge extensive knowledge of illusion will uh, probably disagree on that part and the second part it should be called reality and not an illusion no there is no reality and there is no illusion because what we are calling it as reality is uh, always changing the illusion is always changing so it cannot be real it is not the truth and uh, the existence cannot be classified as reality or illusion 
it is both and it is neither so that will be the, my answer to that question uh, next question layer structured layer structure is universal so why are there differences among people animals etc uh, so <clears throat> yes existence is uh, manifested or is uh, apparent in a layered structure uh, and uh, knowledge of illusion tells us that uh, certain patterns uh, are in are on a different frequency than uh, other patterns and patterns have tendency to maintain themselves they have an inertia and so uh, animals uh, uh, start from a lower layer at first that at at the beginning there is only a raw potential then there is a mineral state according to the layered model field then there is a vegetative state where uh, uh, plants and other biological entities reside and then there uh, and there are reptilian and mammal mammalian layers where all the animals can be classified onto that layer and then we have sapient or awakened uh, which can be people so why are there differences where uh, logically speaking there uh, there uh, according to knowledge of evolution there is no possible outcome it is an naturally evolved structure clear structure is makes the most sense and it is the only logical outcome so that will be my answer to that question how to remove the unwanted states uh from a path of knowledge perspective by simply being in awareness all that is unnecessary will be dropped uh, and uh on the only thing the speaker has to do here is to be patient and be uh, and abide in the realization that he is the experiencer of all the states and when he does this all the unwanted states whatever they may be they are dropped that will be the my answer to ninth question and last one existence is continuously evolving towards a better existence to or false this will be false because uh, existence just is uh, uh there is no better version of existence than it is night right now uh, uh, existence is non trivial so the statement that uh, existence right now is not perfect and it will be perfect or a better in some near future will be categorically false because isness is all that there is and whatever the existence is uh, it is here and now although we can say that on uh, relatively speaking there may be a, a better experience or it would uh, the experiences will be more meaningful but they too themselves will be within the existence and not uh, uh, and not the existence so yes that will be my answer to the question there is no better existence whatever it is whatever the existence is it is right now and that ends the question thank you and i would like to hear a commentary guruji's commentary on that thank you thank you very much this was a very good attempt by siddarth and he got uh, 6.5 marks out of 10 which is a very good score actually i can see that he has the fundamental knowledge the essential knowledge is there except he is still getting confused by the twisted questions because there are some twisted questions in this list and uh, so my uh, um, impression is that he is progressing very nicely you are progressing very nicely actually very good knowledge and uh, you need a little bit of sharpening of it you need to become an expert in it so that nobody can confuse you no question will confuse you otherwise you are pass and you can now do all the experiments in the step number 4 uh, i have looking to add apart 
apart from the fact that I really enjoyed the program, uh, doing, uh, writing all the articles, I truly enjoyed it. And uh, also being in your presence, meeting you twice and meeting all the people in our peer experiences group. And hopefully uh, my whole life will be permeated through knowledge and it gets refined as I progress. And yes, I would agree that I need to be more articulate and succinct in my delivery. <laughs> and yes, the questions were a bit twisted. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll, I would also like to thank Shubham who helped me with the initial stages and also for preparation of the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hmm, very good. Your future is very bright. You have the potential. So let's discuss the questions a little bit. And the first question was, why is knowledge necessary? And his answer was perfectly correct, not full marks, that it is like a medicine. Why is medicine necessary? If there is no disease, no need. If there is no suffering, if there is no bondage, no need. In the existence, as you know, there is no knowledge and there is no ignorance. So. If it is needed, it is given. Otherwise, we don't need it. Then number two, what is the biggest cause of ignorance? Again, he got full marks. Yes, the list of causes was perfect. Number three, which truth is more important, rel relative or absolute? Here he got half mark. And, um, and the correct answer is actually that both are important. I wanted to hear only this much, that both are important. The relative helps in uh, functioning in the relative sense, which means in the illusion. And the absolute is important for taking us out of the illusion. Both are important. So he said it depends on the need, where we are and what state we are in. Yes, that is also there. But um, you see, we cannot deny that the relative is unimportant sometimes and the absolute becomes important sometimes. No. They are always important, both are. And the relative truth is only a name. Even the absolute truth is not absolute. We know that it is arbitrary, it is um, personal. Everybody decides their own truth, isn't it? So ultimately it's all practical, a practical matter. So anyway, his uh, attempt was very good, so he got half marks. Next was experiences. experiencer is not an object but nothing is an object true or false here also he got half marks so this is an example of a twisted question now it will be very difficult to find an answer so i would like to ask people in the satsang what do they think we keep saying the experiencer is not an object don't try to put the qualities of the object on it but do we have a real object here in the existence is there anything called an object any views, any opinions? Remember, the question is very twisted. Layla is saying, ultimately, there are no objects, emptiness only. Very nice answer. Let's see if there are any opinions. Objects are only an appearance, yes. And the Siddhant is saying, um, subject, object, really, reality is relative. Truth. Um, well, we are asking, are there any objects or not? The question is saying, nothing is an object. Is this true? Is it true or not? So, uh, I would ask Siddhan to make it clear a little bit. The distinction between subject and object is relative. Probably he's saying like this. That's right. Yes, from a non-dual level, there are no objects. Yes, right. Aprajita is saying, experiencer is experiencing itself. Yes, so what are you going to call an object? If all that can be experienced is myself, which is the subject only. And probably that is what Siddhant was saying. Right? How can you distinguish it? It will be arbitrary, relative or practical dis distinction only. Then why do we keep saying that experience is not an object if there are? <laughs> Vandana is saying irreducibles are perceived as object. And the irreducible is me, isn't it? Ultimately, it is me who is getting who is being perceived as objects. And remember, the definition of objects on the path of knowledge is very broad. You can say that uh, any experience is an object. 
the physical objects are objects obviously and the body is an object on the path of knowledge the body is an object people are objects they don't like <laughs> it if we, if we call them objects but they are objects don't call them on their faces but uh, the mind is also an object remember everything is vibration only and ultimately the vibration is me and i was expecting this kind of answer from siddharth but uh, uh, as i said he needs a little bit more contemplation there siddharth is saying most twisted of twist questions <laughs> yes probably because this question was never asked and actually nobody asked this question in our satsang also this was never asked in any test so remember this thing that uh, this is said that the experiencer is not an object only to remove the belief from the minds of the seeker that the experiencer is an object of any kind that it can be experienced and has the qualities of some kinds whether physical whether non physical whether mental or mental it has nothing and that is why we keep saying that look don't try to think of the experiencer as an object think of it like a screen infinite screen or like sky or like space infinite space but these are metaphors it is even a more zero than these things it is not really there as an object okay so think about it number 5 if you are the experiencer are other people lifeless puppets so i was not happy with the answer here and uh, he got zero although the attempt was very good but he did not say that which i wanted to hear you see in these exams the right or wrong does not matter it really matters what i want to hear so again i would ask people if they want to attempt this answer i am the experiencer what about the people the the answer is really simple actually yes graham is saying others <laughs> others are me there are no others there are no others that was one line answer i don't know what he said actually i don't remember what he said or in other words you can say that they are also experiencer now everybody will say the same thing i am the experiencer you are that isn't it this is the mahamantra or the you can say the great sayings in advait i am brahman and you are that also <laughs> so this is what this question is asking who are the people and we should call them brahman yes but people are not brahman you see brahman is people yes excellent answers so let's go forward which experience is unchanging and why full marks correct answer why is illusion not random if it has laws it should be called reality not illusion and he got half marks here but why half because he said it correctly that you know there is no reality in uh, the manifested part there is no reality laws are no laws it is changing and that is our criteria changing is false changing is illusion but he did not answer um, that question you know why is illusion not random he said uh, it is random sometimes it is not random yes, i i think it is he said something like this but i did not understand it so why is illusion not random anybody it is told in the program actually i think or is the question wrong is the question twisted that the illusion is really random but uh, who knows realizing it depends on the degree of entropy mm-hmm. and uh, that is right but what we are really asking is why are there laws at all you see there will be a little bit of randomness here and there why are there laws the illusion is not expected to have any regularity any laws any rules and siddhant is saying just because laws appear in randomness randomness is not reduced very cryptic answer but i think he but i can say that i know what he is saying rohit is saying because it is changing what do you mean because it is changing because it is changing it is not random it can change in a random way what is stopping it vinay is saying there won't be meaning in randomness yes vinay is almost 80 90% correct and rajit is saying for apparent stability 
very good very good answer siddharth is saying laws uh, are there to make appearance more meaningful yes did you say that in the test i can't remember now laws are there to <laughs> but we cannot say like this that the reason for the laws is to make the experience more okay you did not but but you see that that can be taken as a correct answer although um, we cannot say that the reason for there being a law is that somebody something existence wanted meaning to appear there no still i don't see any good answer here lela is saying without laws there would be no experience that would be perceived uh, let me read all of it actually i'm lag- lagging a little bit gram is saying resonance creates reproduction and patterns oh okay that is law isn't it we are now asking the question beyond it why is there resonance why is there reproduction vipin is saying experience is limited to laws to make it meaningful to enjoy the play yes many people are saying this thing so that the patterns appear structured and meaningful yes pratip has also said the same thing so that must be the right answer keshav it is wrong to assume that illusion is only random there are all sorts of possibilities in emptiness it is possibility for illusion to be not random and we are in that world where it is not random 100% marks to keshav this is what i wanted to hear <laughs> see and i have said this very clearly in the program even though i don't remember where keshav's answer is perfect and siddhant is saying lack of laws is logical impossibility yes that is covered by keshav's statement that there are all possibilities so why not the possibility of laws then what happens is the mind latches on to the regular and ignores the irregular which means it ignores the high entropy and considers or is attached to only the low entropy where it finds more meaning the creatures the mind and the survival mechanisms they prefer it because if a creature prefers randomness and won't won't stay alive for for long you see so the brain is actually a pattern matching machine everybody must be knowing that those who are in computers simply ma- matching of patterns the regu- uh, the brain tries to find regularity among uh, randomness and so ultimately we perceive only regularity not random something which is completely random will not be even perceived or it is completely meaningless just like many people said so the, the, uh, the, there is appearance that the universe is perfectly logical perfectly according to laws everything no the reality is there are all possibilities all possibilities you write something on a paper it is actually very lawful there are rules according to which the uh, that letter is written and it is very very low entropy and so on you see meaningful information but when a dog sees it <laughs> when a dog perceives that letter complete randomness isn't it complete randomness for the dog this itself is enough to prove what keshav said and what was mentioned in the program it is simply appearance the laws are appearances there is a reason they are there and the reason is survival the regular is preferred the lawful is predictable so it is preferred preferred and the creatures are evolved around this perceived sense of lawfulness rules and uh, somebody said we are in the yeah, keshav said we are in the world where uh, which is not random yes this is not a coincidence because the life won't evolve in a uh, memory area or whatever we call as world where there is complete randomness will it evolve there no and if there is only complete randomness that means all possibilities are not getting manifested the possibilities of there being a regular pattern is not getting manifested so it will be a very special area is actually impossible to have this kind of areas there is always all possibilities in all the memory areas so there is chance of life everywhere in the universal memory in no part of it is lifeless by life i mean these structured creatures entities choke full of creatures actually if you use any perceiving instrument like the human brain or your layered structure or whatever you will always find creatures worlds structures this is very amazing 
uh, Graham is saying something might start random, but if it has stability, then it resonates and then initially random possibility reproduces. Yes, everything starts random, you are right. And then self organizes. Those patterns that remain random, they do not form anything meaningful and that explains everything you see. The laws enable more laws because they enable more structure and the structure is law. This is also said in the program somewhere. It is taken directly from the Kabbalion <laughs> where they say that the mind and laws are not separate. And it is actually big insight. You, you must appreciate the intelligence of these people, you ancient Egyptian or whoever wrote this thing. They said the mind and the laws are not separate. The mind is the law. That means the uh, structure itself defines the law. If there were no laws, there won't be any structure. And if there won't, there is no structure, there won't be any laws. Remember this thing, it's very important. Siddhant is saying a lot of today's questions are from Kabbalion. <laughs> Very important text. It is as good as Upanishad. For me, Kabbalion is as good as Upanishad. It has a lot of stuff. Lela is asking, can you repeat what you just said? I was saying that uh, if and the mind is not a separate thing which has magically somehow gotten hold of laws somewhere and the mind and laws are the same thing. Remember, if there is no structure, there is no law. And if there are no laws, there won't be any structure. The structure is the law. And uh, if I say it like this, probably you won't understand completely because you know you need to contemplate on these things. Contemplate on these things. Why was this said? And you will understand. It's not that difficult. But I don't know of any good way to explain these things. It has to be seen directly like this. So. Vikas is saying, uh, through the specific structure of our minds, randomness appears to be regularity. Yes, we try to make it meaningful somehow. Okay, so let's go forward. Even I, I cannot explain it much, you see. And there, there is one more uh, thing I want to add here. That to look at the video games, for example. There are laws in the video game, isn't it? If you fire a bullet, it follows a physical law there. Physical means the copy of the physical law simulation that it won't go straight into the sky it will fall down and it will take the parabolic path or whatever you call it and if the character runs out of health the character dies and if you break the um, objects they you know shatter into pieces and so on there are laws built in you cannot go through the walls sometimes you can go through the wall <laughs> if there is bug in the game but mostly they ensure there will be collusion so, uh, but that does not make it reality, isn't it? You, you are very much sure that it is illusion. Even with laws, that game, computer game, is an illusion. So the presence of laws does not actually prove that the experience is real. And this is not understood by many scientists also because of their materialistic mindset. This is a very important logical conclusion that presence of laws rules, regularity, does not prove that the experience is real. Okay, let's go forward. Layered structure is universal. So why are there differences among people, animals, etc.? And who can answer this? Today I am simply giving you all the questions. I am passing it on. It's a big party today. Question party. Everybody gets the questions. Anybody want to answer? Layered structure. We call it the universal memory, isn't it? And why are the people, animals, entities, why are they so different? You must understand the meaning of the UM here. What is the meaning of the universal in the universal memory? And then you will be able to answer. And remember, we are not talking about the experiencer here. The experiencer is also universal and only one. We are talking about the experience. Lela is saying because all potentials are there in emptiness. Very good. But uh, that is not the answer. Graham is also saying the same. Madhuri is saying memories are different. Yes, memories are different. But we are talking about the universal memory now. Layered structure, we say, is only one. And then the boundaries are apparent between creatures. The boundaries are apparent. Isn't That's what we said in the program. How come the differences arise? This is the actual question. What is the reason of different behaviors of these different uh, bodies, minds? 
Jess is saying to make this game interesting. No, no. That's not a logical answer actually. That you can say poetic answer. The game is not interesting and the game is interesting both. The Brahman <laughs> has no concept of interesting and boring. Graham is saying because the limited individual filters the one differently. Very good attempt. Madhuri saying causal bodies are different. Yes, you, you are very close to the answer. Okay, Vikas is saying that different unique appearances are simply the filtered view of our minds. The reality is undivided, timeless, through the specific configuration of our minds, which simply has originated from the same hmm. <laughs> Very good attempt by Vikas. Anybody has... Um, <laughs> because I am also searching for an answer, correct answer. Sanjay is saying as per the need for survival of layers. We have defined the universal memory or the layered structure as sum total of all the structures. You should remember this. We have never defined the layered structure as one monolithic single structure which is uniform everywhere. Have we defined like this? No. We simply said if you collect everything, everything that is manifested into one, you will find a structure which is the layered structure. Now, it, this, this definition allows for differences. So, the parts of the structure, remember we are not talking about the experiencer, it has parts. The structure it has parts, the memory, it is only memory and it is arranged in layers, but it has parts, apparent parts and these parts, they gather different experiences during their lifetimes, which is what Madhuri was saying that the causal bodies are different, yes. And that is why the behaviors are different. Although these causal bodies form the part of the universal memory, whatever they manifest will be different. This is my answer. Now, I don't know whether it's perfectly correct or not. But the differences are apparent, not essential. Essentially, it is all memory. Now, it has different programs in different locations. Again, we go to the computer metaphor here. Remember your uh, the RAM in the system, isn't it all one, exactly made, ag exactly alike, but there are different files stored there and there are different programs stored there. You can remove all these programs, you can load some, something else there, but essentially it is the same memory functioning differently somewhere, here and there, there are differences. So essentially everything is memory, that is the first thing. But because of the impressions gathered through various experiences, there are different impressions in different parts of the memory and these parts are related to whatever you call as organisms, people, animals, whatever. The causal bodies, the subtle bodies, the devic bodies, entities, whatever, they are expressing these differences in the memory. And remember one more thing that if the two memories are exactly the same, then they will express exactly one organism. You won't be able to see two there, two organisms there. It's impossible. And this is something new, isn't it? You never heard it. <laughs> and that causes a necessity of everything being different. Because the same, if they are same, they will be seen as one. Remember this. <laughs> so hopefully everybody understood this answer. Jayesh has a question. Group mind constitutes or forms universal mind. The universal mind is the ultimate group mind. There are smaller group minds in the universal mind and there are even smaller group minds and ultimately we will never find individual mind. It's always a complex structure of some kind. It's very arbitrary where we draw the boundaries, very arbitrary. Mother is saying are the, as the parts of the body are different but makes one body, can we use this analogy? Yes, yes, very good. Yeah. We never say that I am hand, I am feet, I am nose, no. Sometimes we say like this, I am the body. <laughs> so, it is like this. It is universal memory, yes, it is universal memory. But uh, some different things are written in different places there. And this can be understood only by metaphors. For example, your hard disk is all magnetic uh, material. You know? It is the magnetic material, shape of a disk. But actually many things are written there which are different. Anyhow, let's go forward. This discussion today it is Maya oriented Q and A, isn't it? So number nine, how to remove the unwanted state? He got full marks. 
and uh, by unwanted state we simply means that are not positive that, that cause devolution not evolution so he was right actually and number 10 existence is continuously evolving towards a better existence true or false and he said false which is absolutely right absolutely right existence is whole and complete perfect and empty in every way there is no possibility of evolution there so what is evolving are small parts of it and what are they evolving towards nothing meaningful nothing meaningful the evolution is simply concept which is applicable in relative sense let me see some comments graham is saying desire drives the fil- filters of the individual to resonate with different patterns and see different entities very good yes very good people see what they want to see this want can be called a desire and it is nothing just impressions on the mind and whatever is impressed on the mind dictates the next experience the coming experience this thing is very difficult to understand today is uh, level of difficulty is too high actually <laughs> compared to our everyday discussion whatever we are talking about is almost borderline impossible but graham is right but deep is saying but structures of varying arrangements are seen universally it simply means that okay yes you are also right this is word play only play of words isn't it that's why i said if you know the meaning of universal in the universal memory you will know what i'm saying it's like a jungle but you see you can say universal jungle but every tree is different in the jungle are there same trees are two trees exactly the same in a jungle no but isn't the jungle like kind of one thing there is similarity in the patterns there anyhow um pratip is right gram is saying by resonating with the desired pattern we amplify that pattern this creates reciprocal adaptation in the ras jewel net now your first sentence is exactly correct very 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 right but i don't know anything about indra's jewel that is a metaphor of something else who can tell me what is the meaning of indra's that infinite jewel where one jewel is reflecting all the jewels you see it means something else what is the meaning of that indra's net actually indra's net jewel net yes pratip is saying your question part is intoxication today too much really for it as yes everybody is going to get drunk today <laughs> i came to know this right now because when i was writing the questions they all looked very innocent but very difficult and siddharth passed the test so amazing isn't it because you can see i'm struggling to answer some things isn't it i'm myself struggling who wrote the questions now we know some things like uh, you know the existence has no evolution and all but any anybody any outsider who has not the who has not done the program or who has not gone deeper will say no existence is evolving there is evolution what else i am doing the practice for i am the existence you see um, these are really difficult questions some questions they look easy because we know the answer yes the questions were difficult siddhant is saying is it true that seeker gets question according to their level somewhat true yes somewhat true but they are not spared you see we don't spare them and uh, if 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 i feel that the seeker is not really serious about the program i am going to give them uh, very very simple questions no this not never happens the question and uh, the 10 questions are always mixed that means we get to test the advanced level as well as the basic level like you can see the question number 6 which experience is unchanging and why is a childish question isn't it very very childish any child can answer this so why is a simple question hiding in list of very very dark questions it is mixed bag always but yes the level gets tested some seekers get very difficult questions and uh, i probably by now everybody knows that i don't write i don't create the questions i am simply typist is so that is saying today's test was a humbling experience <laughs> now you understand the importance of tests and now you can see those who don't appear in tests simply watch the videos they have no future jay is saying net was indra's weapon no 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 
Indra's weapon is well known, it is lightning bolt. Why is that? Because the brain operates on electricity and the Indra is simply a metaphor for brain in the ancient writings. Graham has the Wikipedia in. Metaphor to illustrate emptiness dependent origination and interpretation, interpenetration in Buddhist philosophy. Very good, dear. But I don't think, <laughs> I don't think that is the right answer. But very convincing. Anyhow, you do the research, you see. I don't claim to know anything about it. Okay, Sandesh is saying, I have asked you a question that if there is a creator, then who created the creator? And you answered, there is no creator. The existence is the um, experience, an experience at both. Can you explain that in deep, in depth? Yes, you see, when you ask the questions uh, in the chat, telegram, I cannot write it, you know, very detailed answer because it takes a lot of time. So it's always recommended that people come in satsang and ask their questions because we have two hours here to do nothing but discuss. So yes, there is no creator. Why? First, let us take the logic. The creator, if he is there, he or she or whatever, it, that means the existence has already happened. That means that thing exists, which is going to create something. It is all, the creation is already there in the form of creator. And then the question arises, who created the creator? Which you also said, Sandesh also said this thing. And this question will be always present. Who created the creator? Because if you insist on a need of creator, then you must insist the need of the creator of the creator. Insist on that also. But then you can find another creator for the creator, but then you can again ask this question and it will go into an infinite pattern, which means meaningless question, isn't it? Which means the concept of the creator of something is a meaningless concept. There is your logic, you know, this much should be enough to answer the question. We don't even go, uh, need to go into uh, existences, the experience and the experience are combined. You see, that is too advanced for you, Sandesh. So we, we keep it a simple answer. Then, you see, this uh, answer comes from the Western perspective, Western philosophy, there where they refute the creator clearly. Now, uh, let us take the argument of the Indian philosophy or Eastern philosophy. What do they say? That in order to create something, we require a raw material and an agency that together, taken together, will be called a creator. Isn't it? If you want to create a product, you, you need a raw material and a factory, a machine. Or when you want to create, let us say, there were no factories those days. So they used the metaphor of uh, potter who, who makes the clay pots. So you to create the clay, clay pot, you need uh, clay and you need a wheel which the potter can rotate, you know, potter is also part of the system and there is the creation of the pot. Now, if there is already raw material, if there is already machine or an agen agency to create, that means the creation is already there in the form of this raw material and the system or the agency which created and it simply means that simply some kind of change happened. The raw material changed into something. That is the only meaning here. It is not a creation, isn't it? So this argument is foolproof. If you, if you combine two arguments of the infinite regression and this uh, agency in the material thing, then you get your answer. Now, nobody can say that there was a creator. After knowing this much, uh, any intelligent person will understand that the, the concept of creator is flawed, which is a mistake, it's wrong. So hopefully that uh, we went into deep here a little bit. So what is there then? If there is no creator, no creation, what is there? There is only emptiness, which is apparent in various dream-like forms, dream objects. And nobody created it, obviously, because it's not really there. And it is, it is the it is called the experiencer, and it is experiencing itself as illusory forms. Nothing is getting created. The creation is the creator, you can say, and so on. The concepts of creation and creator both are not applicable to the truth, to the reality, to the existence. This is the conclusion. 
and obviously there are many many more many many more um, arguments about this and incidentally the word brahma comes from brahman who is the god of creation who is the creator <laughs> it's amazing isn't it so why is that because science says that you know this agency created and what is the agency the whatever we call as the vibration is actually the brahman brahmanand and you know that all the manifestation is simply vibration so it makes a little bit of sense there that the you know the brahma created everything and the brahma can mean here the manifested or the uh, part which is has qualities the part of the existence which has qualities you can see confusing picture here how come this happened because there are many many streams of philosophy in the world sometimes they are saying the same thing using the different words sometimes sometimes they are interpreted incorrectly so on you see so yes no creator and if you have more questions and if you want to understand more you can ask more questions no problem vikas is saying it is begin to feel that the waking state is a frozen state of awareness and dream state is the melting state melting period of the same frozen waking state that gets experienced before it melts completely into its own timeless spaceless ground and this movement repeats in the other direction in the internal to our own is my interpretation on reality about correct we don't call it reality actually never call it reality is yes, your interpretation about the illusion isn't it so waking state uh, you can say frozen state you can call it poetically metaphorically frozen state because it changes very slowly at least some things in the uh, waking state they change very slowly the things that make it a waking state the things that make it a physical place they are very slow like the earth the sun the moon and so on you see laws so uh, dream you can call it melting or disappearing state yes because it changes very fast very fast sometimes it looks like that it has no laws at all it's kind of meaning meaningless isn't it mostly but still you remember some of it that means it had some meaning it went into memory that means it had some meaning remember the complete randomness does not get registered in the memory so uh, yes you can say it like this that a uh, little bit frozen vibration is the physical world which is seen in the waking state and uh, the fast changing vibration is the dream state it can be said like this however it is not completely correct and essentially there is no difference between waking and dreaming no difference essentially they are apparently different that's all think about it gram is saying agree maybe indra's net doesn't fit the question but it's so cool it stretches the same problem of individuation in consciousness that is fundamentally one yes yes i think that comes very close to the interpretation of the indra's net Um, my interpretation was really a little bit more uh, colorful conspiracy kind of interpretation that um, the indra's net represents the neural network in the brain or in a machine so <laughs> but i don't have any proof to give you that this is the case but yes the, the real meaning of indra's net as described by many authors is that uh, the whole is reflected in the part and the parts are reflected in the whole this is probably the accepted metaphor mary is saying it feels very peaceful when you know there is no creator then there is no one to blame only experience uh, look you can blame <laughs> there is no problem at all but it's kind of meaningless isn't it you uh, some people blame themselves it is all my creation it is all my doing and that is also meaningless even i say sometimes you know your situation in your life is your doing i say it like this but that is therapy only you see there is therapy that is to shift the blame from somebody else to yourself which the ego does not like and calms down causes peace it's a therapy actually yes there is nobody to blame and actually there is no bad situation this is the more fundamental thing to know that there are no bad situations in the existence 
and obviously there are no good situations also which you are expecting so impatiently you are expecting that the situation will improve somehow isn't it no it will never improve because it never went bad it never degraded into anything so there is no chance of improvement uh, it is all already perfect as it is this is the knowledge uh, what is the ignorance some things are bad some things are good and this thing is to to be blamed for the bad conditions and this one should be praised for the good no 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 it's all illusion you see it's all ignorance when you understand that everything is perfect would you blame anybody or yourself no remember so many things go wrong in a movie somebody gets murdered somebody gets kidnapped some <laughs> some you know explosions happen destruction happens and the hero loves the wrong woman the hero falls in love with a woman who is already in love with somebody else so these things happen in the movie are you going to blame the director of the movie or the story writer no they have created the perfect drama isn't it probably the events in the movie are relatively not perfect you you can blame the villain or you can blame anybody you see but the story writer and the director has and the actors have done tremendous job great job rendering that movie convincingly so same way the existence or the brahman is perfect in every way i am that rest is movie enjoy it is so well written that you are engrossed in it you see if it were a cheap movie with cheap sets and bad special effects you would have left the cinema hall by now why are you stuck here <laughs> since many lifetimes you're stuck here the this is the success of the artist isn't it the artist who is himself the existence he has made this art piece so beautiful so convincing so real that you don't want to leave it amazing isn't it pratib is saying i like patanjali he says god is just an instrument to surrender to very good yes the the you see the word ishwar means god here so ishwar appears in many many places even it appears in advait although we say it is not there you know uh, i i i say this always that it's not there but this word was used by adi shankaracharya and many many people so um, but uh, you know patanjali was the, probably the first to define it properly i don't i am not aware of any other scriptures that define it so clearly patanjali said that the ishwar is a special uh, purush isn't it purush vishesh ishwar this is one of the formula in the patanjali formula so that is clear now the purush word comes from the sankhya so ishwar the concept of the ishwar at least in the yog comes from the sank where it is simply another creature just something special something more powerful so those who cannot surrender to anybody you see they should surrender to this thing and uh, your best option is to surrender to your guru because you will never find ishwar anywhere it's a concept sandesh is saying can you can one observe sensation desires without identifying with it and how yes because you see the identification comes as a thought that this is my sensation this is my desire and this thought can be clearly observed and if you have this knowledge that it is not really mine it is simply happening just like the rain is happening the sun rises you see moon rises and uh, the desire rises the sensation rises in this infinite screen of the consciousness so as soon as you have this knowledge you will be able to see that it is not me you will be and un- identified with it and then you will be able to find what is the reason it is there if there is a desire to eat food you will you will be able to see that it's not mine no no it's not mine it's not me but the reason is that the body needs food and then you will be able to do the correct action which is eating the food so sensation also same way you you sense pain in your hand and suddenly you find find that you are touching a hot pan or hot coffee cup and then the correct action there is to remove your hand which will happen anyway but then the thought comes that oh it was my hand that got burned i felt the pain it was my pain and this is all nonsense you can see it in the light of knowledge so vikas is saying ultimately isn't guru 
is also a concept just like ishwar as you said yes yes, yes. ultimately uh, uh, the guru exists only till the time there is ignorance in the student once the knowledge is given the guru disappears and the student also disappears what is the knowledge here you and me are one our essence is one so who is guru then nobody we are all ultimate brahman now anybody who claims to be guru is a total idiot and every anybody who says i am still a student simply being you see modest so yes and the and guru is anybody who takes away this guru and student uh, distinction who destroys this sandesh is saying as we discussed about there is no creator then we have falsified everything from indra vishnu shiva those are just stories they are very very useful stories we should not discard the stories we should try to find the teaching in the story so what are these thing three things they are not creators they are representations of three uh, major activities in the universal memory now i won't say universal memory because he is new uh, you can say he is the uh, these three p are only representing three energies that are found in our experience the creative energy the maintaining energy and the destructive energies and they are found everywhere you look around you will find them but why are they like four hands and five legs and whatever you see and that is marketing yes just like siddhan said you need to make these things popular especially among kids and so on so that you know people pay attention if you write these things like a scientific paper nobody will read it so you can see that uh, just like popular science these are uh, popularization of the philosophical concepts which are very very difficult to grasp so just like there is science very difficult but there is science fiction very entertaining but just stories but isn't science fiction responsible for producing so many scientists yes so that is the utility of the metaphors strange key creatures statues and gods and goddesses stories mythology they served a purpose they are there to um, attract your attention to get your attention so that you start asking questions and this is how you are pulled into the spiritual path look at our program and all you see <laughs> look at our satsangs most of the stuff here is just story we cook it up every day it is just to make um, our journey easy entertaining and um, also informative which means we, we distribute the knowledge also through stories so stories are not bad assuming that they are truth that is kind of immature isn't it and getting the teachings out of them implementing them in your life getting inspired by the stories to find out the truth is intelligence so stories are a you know important part of the culture everywhere and the thing is the fine print is missing <laughs> have you seen the movies where they have a disclaimer in front of the movie that all the events in this movie are fictitious any resemblance to living or dead is coincidental and i am not responsible that is what they are saying and you see this disclaimer is now removed from many stories that is the problem isn't it that is the problem now those who don't have a mature intellect they, they think these stories are the truth and why can't they grasp the teachings because somebody who thinks the story is the truth will not be able to grasp any teaching any knowledge impossible and those who are intelligent they don't even need the story they need only summary executive summary their work is done job is finished so you see these things were made for uh, different kinds of seekers who are found on different levels of evolution so everything is uh, you know uh, tailor made for these people by which i mean something some or the other teaching or material exists for all kinds of seekers this is the richness of the spiritual field nobody is returned empty handed here they are given something if they are you cannot pay attention you know on the distraction is their attention you know for some people they cannot be forced to pay attention they but they can be distracted easily so if that is the case of their mind 
that is the situation that is the condition of their mind then they are given a distraction that is very brilliant idea isn't it like the children in the school they are distracted by toys colorful um, shapes and whatever you see so they learn something this is the brilliant idea that the old people ancient people came up with and we still use it so as you grow up you will leave the stories but you will retain the knowledge that is the beauty sometimes the stories are very important like the concept of devi in tantra very important and if you go in tantra they will say devi is real devi is the truth and can you simply leave that ashram and can you call that guru some kind of ignorant guru no 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 they do it for a very good purpose okay there is one more question by sandesh can you tell us about your guru and your experiences with him i had many gurus and there was no special experience with anybody that is worth mentioning and uh, the only good experience i had was the ignorance was beaten out that is the worth mentioning experience everybody i met they just they did not give me any extraordinary colorful experiences spiritual experience at all they simply shown they had that kind of character that they, they used to simply show where i am wrong as soon as i open my mouth you are wrong this is my experience so about the gurus and all i learned one thing that when you face a guru just wipe yourself clean you know wipe your slate do not even try to show that you know anything at all because it will be shown as wrong you see so all you need to do is simply sit down there and say that i don't know anything please teach me this is what i learned do not ask anything also because you are asking something on a subject that means you know about that subject that means your slate is not blank just sit down surrender and that he knows what to say the guru knows what to say what to teach he is only looking for surrender he is looking for a place to start so when you go there with all the beliefs superstitions already full then he struggles to find a place to put his teaching in there is no space to put the teaching in it's, it's a over packed suitcase what are you going to pack there so the guru's job is made difficult by such a student now he needs to first make you empty and that is you know more difficult than giving you the ultimate knowledge of the universe you see because people are not ready to let go of their blind beliefs that is more difficult than actually telling what is truth i learned it you see because nobody told me these things so i had to learn all these things how to sit in a pose of receiving how to sit in a receiving pose and it is not a pose that you make with your body you see that is your attitude that i am ready to receive now i am empty i don't know anything at all i have this only curiosity or a desire to know desire to be liberated you express this much and take the kitten path the path of a baby cat i think everybody knows about this path of the kitten this mind is you see so volatile that does not stick to anything specific keeps changing so much and then you see whatever you look at whatever you read whomever you meet the music the movies they keep changing isn't it and that is the sign of freedom what is the sign of bondage that you cannot even look at something which is not familiar that kind of mind does not want to explore anything he wants the same old thing in front of him every day that is a very limited mind so what has happened is because of the openness uh, any any person on the path of knowledge any seeker should have an open mind let me check what is this you know this should be the attitude that means you never get stuck to a specific kind of thing that means you keep yourself open to exploration all the time any book any movie any music as soon as you stick to one thing uh, that means you say is sign of bondage only are you not stuck to a specific kind of life specific kind of food specific people you don't want anybody except your mom and dad <laughs> or only this one or two friend because you don't like anybody 
So these are the signs of bondage that keep us stuck in the world in the same pattern. You see, there's nothing wrong with the world. It's a very huge place, very good, beautiful world. Uh, but this, this repeating pattern is the problem, which we call the habitual pattern, because it it has stopped the evolution of the creature because of its preferences for the same, same, same. You are stuck here because of this kind of pattern that prefers only one thing. So, how to start your liberation? Explore. Don't say no to the new things. Sandesh is saying, now I am thinking that I am that student with the bag fully packed. <laughs> because I have lots of questions to ask and already gathered information. How can I empty it and surrender? Very good question. I simply assume that I don't know anything. Start from there. That probably, you know, whatever I know is all wrong. Because probably, not probably, absolutely, you have heard it from somebody. You never seen it yourself. This is not your experience. And you should doubt it. What if it is wrong? What if whatever I heard from here and there is wrong? And this doubt will empty you. Then you are in the receiving pose. Then the Guru will know what to do with you. Otherwise, you know, I've seen that those people who are already full, they are not offered any teaching. What are they offered? Sometimes nothing is offered. Because the Guru knows, you know, by the time I make this fellow empty by scolding or calling him stupid or whatever, you know, by the time I could educate 20 people, I could enlighten 50 people by the time this one fellow gives up his beliefs. So they don't do anything. And I learned it hard way also, you know, nobody told me these things. So I had to learn it and I saw that it wastes a lot of time to handle a person who already knows everything. And it is very easy to uh, teach somebody who is simply surrendered, who says, I like you, I, I like whatever you say, I want to learn whatever you have learned. Okay, come on then, let's go. So easy, isn't it? And that fellow absorbs everything like a sponge. And that is not the condition actually. We constantly ask people to be critical of the Guru. Keep asking the questions. But that art of asking the question is somewhat different, you see. That is called the critical thinking. Not gathering of facts and trivia from here and there. That is not, not, not the questioning thing. You see. The critical thinking is, you said this, now show me how this is true. That is called the critical thinking. What logic is behind this? How did you arrive at the solution here? Well, just like mathematics, the teacher can tell you the right answer after writing the problem. And will you simply go away with the answer? No. Any, per, any student of mathematics will ask for a derivation. Okay, this is the right answer. No problem at all. But I'll accept it only when you show me how you arrived there. So this is the critical thinking, this kind of questions must be asked all the time. But uh, when you approach a teacher, a guru with, look, I know this thing now, please tell me, please explain everything about this. <laughs> it's uh, not very productive. Go empty. I want knowledge, you know, this is sign of emptiness. Actually, this thing is uh, there in the front of our program. When people enter the program, there is a filter in front of the program. This is called the step one of the program. And one of the question is about this. What do you want? And the correct answer there is, I want knowledge. And there are other five answers that are simply distractions to find out who does not want knowledge, who already has a lot of knowledge. And they are not allowed in the program. So... It's midnight already. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed today's discussion like I enjoyed. And uh, Siddharth, uh, once again, congratulations to you. You have done a very good job. And uh, we'll meet again next time in the next satsang. Thank you everybody for uh, participating in today's satsang. See you.